Hi, my name is Leah Chantel. Welcome back. And today I'm going to talk about how to overcome being a people pleaser. Now, the reason I'm discussing this topic is that a lot of intuitive, empathic, and spiritually minded people can accidentally become people pleasers. Not because they're not strong or not independent, but they may have just had very demanding authority figures in their lives when they were growing up. This could be your parent, it could be an older sibling, it could be teachers or other authority figures in your life, maybe neighbors, or if you went to a church, there could have been a demanding person there. Wherever you spent a lot of intimate time as a child and there was a demanding authority figure, in any of these places we can start not only developing our intuition because we are trying to read the situation and read people and anticipate their needs so we're not being threatened by their unmet needs but also we develop people pleasing skills because we abandon our own needs in order to feel safe and secure around these demanding adults and if we're not careful and we've experienced these patterns in childhood we could be taking them into adulthood by mistake and how can we overcome that how can we not take those people pleasing patterns with us and become whole independent adults. I see this pattern a lot among my generation and younger people as well. We do live in a tough environment these days, at least in my country, things are very expensive. A lot of people are living with their parents even into their 30s and beyond and basically those are all signs of people pleasing and codependent behavior because they're centering their survival around another person, i.e. their parent, to take care of them, right? And so when people become people pleasers or dependent on others in inappropriate ways, what happens is they start losing their independence and their sense of identity. They are so busy trying to accommodate the needs of the person who's helping them to survive that they don't have a sense of what they enjoy or what they like to do with their time. Or maybe they do have a sense of what they enjoy and what they do want to do with their time, but it's spent obsessively kind of in a narrow area of life, like the person who's spending a lot, a lot of time on video games. Not to pick on video games or say there's anything wrong with them necessarily in moderation, but when people abandon other aspects of being an adult and depend on another person to live with and then they're obsessing over a specific hobby or interest without growing and contributing as an adult, then it sort of becomes a problem. But this doesn't necessarily have to be video games. It could be board games. It could be going outside for hikes even. Like, I love nature and I love hikes, but if you're doing anything obsessively as a coping mechanism in order to deal with having your life being controlled by somebody else, then that's a sign that you're actually a people pleaser or a codependent. Even if it's a healthy habit, like going to the gym, if you're doing it obsessively to get out of the house because your parents are driving you crazy that you're living with and you really should be living independently as an adult, Yes, it's a slightly healthier coping mechanism than some others, but you're still using it as a coping mechanism. So how do you overcome being a people pleaser? Well, first of all, you need to understand that when you're people pleasing, you usually put your needs and your wants in the hands of somebody else. So if you're living with somebody else and they're paying the rent, for example, you're putting too much power into their hands. There could be some exceptions, like say for example, there could be the person who has a new baby and decides to go on maternity leave in order to raise the baby for a while while the other person works. I don't think that's a codependent relationship. I think that's a special circumstance where there's a new child involved and you need to divert some resources in order to take care of the child. Or another special circumstance could be that you're facing a terrible illness that renders you unable to work temporarily. Again, that can be another special situation where you do become appropriately dependent on someone else. And again, the other situation would be being underage and needing to go to school. But aside from these situations, 
When you're an adult, you should be able to take care of your own needs. You should be able to survive by yourself. And if you're not able to do that, that could be a sign that you have an attachment to somebody else that's too great, that you're people pleasing and trying to win them over inappropriately to take care of too many of your needs. And what happens to people with these habits is that they'll actually behave in the same way that they do for their loved one that they're trying to accommodate in new relationships. So if you have an over a habit of overgiving to a parent that you're living with because they're the ones paying the rent, what may end up happening when you grow up and you decide to have a mature relationship, if you never overcame that emotional pattern inside of you, you may start overgiving to your partner. You may not be waiting for them to come halfway or to offer anything into the relationship. And if you're the one overgiving and then you complain about it, that's actually your fault. You're the one messing up your own relationship because you were overgiving in the first place. And that can be a subtle way a really good relationship can deteriorate, especially as women, we're particularly vulnerable to this because I think we're raised in order to take care of everything, the cleaning, the cooking, and all that around the house. Sometimes men get that kind of upbringing too, but not that often. We get most of it as women. And then basically we can move on into a relationship where we're overgiving and we're caring too much for a partner if that's what we needed to do for our parents when we were living at home with our parents. And to a certain extent, having responsibilities growing up, there isn't anything wrong with that. But I think it just depends on what your emotional motivation is. If you have to do it for your own survival and to win the approval of the parent, or else you're not gonna receive love from them, then that's where it becomes a situation where you're codependent or you're people pleasing in order to survive. If you're doing it because you feel it's constructive and it will help you grow and it's the right thing to do, then that's a good motivation. And parents shouldn't shy away from giving kids responsibilities, but for the right motivations. It shouldn't be something that you do as a condition to receive love, right? That love should be unconditional. But Sometimes we don't feel that way as children. Even sometimes parents could say the right words and they say we love you unconditionally, but for some reason emotionally the undertone is maybe they don't, right? And so kids can still fall into these people-pleasing patterns that they have to overcome as adults. And how do you overcome it? Well, first of all, the very basic things is you have to learn to take care of your own needs. So if you're relying on a partner to validate you or to please you in some kind of way or to take care of you, you need to learn how to do those things on your own and not with a partner. Or if it's a family member or a friend who's doing these things for you, you have to learn how to do all these things independently because that's gonna take the pressure off your relationships. And you're also going to develop confidence when you know how to do things yourself independently. So that's a very important first step. After you can take care of your needs independently, that's where you can explore your passions or your interests or your love of music or television programming or hobbies or hiking or exercise or reading. Whatever those hobbies are, or whatever those preferences are, now is the time to develop an opinion on something and to explore who you really are as a person. Do you believe in certain movements that are going on in society nowadays? Do you align with it or do you think that it's not even a good thing to align with? And I'm not here to argue or say that we should conform to every single trend that's out there. I think we all need to consider what the trend is and if it really aligns with what will make the world a better place from our viewpoint. And so Considering these things, these opinions, do you care about the environment, for example? Do you think global warming is happening and you want to contribute in some way by driving less or taking the bus or walking? Do you want to change your diet in any way to match your beliefs? Do you want to exercise more because you know that's good for your body and you'll be able to serve for a longer period of your life in good health in order 
to take care of somebody who matters to you when you're in an older age. Whatever those reasons are, or the motivations are, they should come from you. It should be something that you believe in. Of course, we can all have influences and feel inspired by others in order to do something good with our lives, but we shouldn't be people pleasing or accommodating or changing our identity to be identically the same as somebody else that influences us. You see what I mean? We should be taking inspiration from others, but keeping our own identity whole and keeping it autonomous from other people. When you're taking those steps, then you know that you are not a people pleaser and that you are actually living an independent life as a happy person. So if you have any questions about how to be an independent, happy person and how to avoid people pleasing or how to avoid codependent relationships, definitely drop me a comment. I'd be happy to talk about it in more detail. I hope you all found this video helpful. If you liked the video, definitely click like and don't forget to hit subscribe if you want to see more helpful videos from me on this topic or other similar topics that are relevant to empathic and intuitive people. That's my specialty and I hope you're all having a wonderful, beautiful week. Take care.